What can our understanding of the brain tell us about strategies to encourage creativity? To find out more about the link between brain function and teaching creativity, Dr. Howard Jones devised an experiment combining a type of brain scanning called functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, with a well-known strategy for encouraging creativity. We carried out an experiment uh, using fMRI to investigate a particular strategy that is used very commonly in the classroom to foster creativity. That strategy is to ask students to incorporate in whatever they're producing, poem, play, piece of art, um, stimuli that are essentially unrelated to each other. These things could be of just, just randomly chosen, but whatever, they're not actually related to each other, that may not be related to the, the task in hand at all. Now, by doing that, we find that the outcomes tend to be increased in their creativity. More creativity is observed. Dr Howard Jones, himself an ex-teacher and teacher trainer, is a leading expert in the creativity field. In his brain imaging study, he found that this random stimuli strategy led to some quite specific increases in brain activity. And it was in an area of the brain associated with higher level conscious control. And that's quite interesting because it made us look more closely at what's going on in the classroom. To help develop this closer understanding, the experiment moved on to a study of the strategy in a real-life learning environment with a series of workshops for trainee drama teachers. Five, four, three, two, one. To start with, the students were given a set of unrelated words which they have to react visually to. Christmas. Five, four, three, two, one. And turn back out. Saturday. Five, four, three, two, one. Turn back round, please. Linking After the students have done a physical representation of a number of these random words, they were given three minutes to create a non-verbal narrative linking the unrelated postures together. Do a series by like one, two, three, change, two, three. So it tells the story through. We could do it like that. Images then, yes. Okay. We were very interested in the reflections of the students talking about the need for extra time when the randomness of the exercise was increased. And that ties in quite neatly with what we saw in the imaging because that type of additional conscious control that's required to make use of these strategies probably does mean extra work required. I think that it made us more sensitive to the time scale, if you like, over which these strategies are orientated. And when you're planning to use an exercise where you're deliberately incorporating elements, some element of randomness or chance, you need to think quite carefully about how you plan that. Because if you're increasing the amount of randomness, you're increasing the amount of work that the students are having to do. And that means you need time to actually produce a quality outcome out of it. <laughs> 